we're, we're uh, asking dumb uh, SEO questions each week. Uh, we answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO questions community on Google+. Um, with us tonight, we have uh, Girish Kapoor from Chandragar in India. Uh, Girish is proud to call himself uh, an SEO. Um, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he is uh, also a Google top contributor on the AdSense and uh, the Google Plus Help community. Uh, Richard Hearn is uh, CEO of redcardinal.ie. Um, he's a, a conversion rate optimization specialist and also, uh, uh, like all of us, proud to call himself an SEO. Um, Richard, uh, oh, Mike Fisher Kirshner is uh, senior SEO manager of uh, Zazzle.com. Uh, Zazzle uh, um, purveyors of 32 million products and uh, counting. Um, Rob Mars is uh, an AdWords aficionado. He's uh, based in the Netherlands. Um, he can be found at marketbiz. Dot nl. Uh, that's uh, market biz b i double z uh, with two z's. Tim Kappa is uh, um, a conversion rate optimization specialist. Uh, he's uh, an SEO and a confidant of uh, uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, okay, so um, sorry for the uh, confusion tonight. Um, just getting to a, a handle on, on, on what uh, what to do. Um, our first question tonight um, is from um, um, Tessa Benaki, um, and it's regarding um, outsourced uh, link removal. Uh, Tessa said, um, "Hi friends, um, in, in, in need of um, some guidance, and I, I'm looking at." Um, um, link, link source link removal for my site. It is too time consuming to do. Um, we have around uh, 8k links. Um, we did not receive a manual penalty, um, but were hit by Penguin. Um, and my screen is uh, frozen. Um, it might, yeah, I tell you what, this is my life. Um, Okay, um, I imagine you guys uh, from your panelists' report um, <laughs> will um, have the rest of um, Tessa's question, and um, in the meantime, I'll try and figure out why this won't won't work. Anybody? Yeah. Um I mean, there's this, there's quite a few tools out there which uh, uh, do help with identifying uh, good from bad. Um, off the top of my head, uh, Link Research Tool is, I believe, is one of the better ones, uh, and I think Link Detox is also quite a good one. Um, but the thing is, um, I did, I did ask in the, you know, if she could give us a URL so we could. Um, you know, she might, uh, she says 8K, but, you know, potentially there might only be, you know, a thousand out of those eight which are bad. Um, but without a URL, we can't really tell. Uh, so, yeah, those, there, there are those two tools. Um, whether they actually will do the whole, whole process for you, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but if you, you know, if this was a um, algorithmic penalty, as you say it was, uh, and you used one or two of those tools, you you could then um, uh, download and I would as a note of caution just double check what they say is 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 good and bad you know ideally you would need to check them um, and then just pop them into a disavow file I would do the entire domain so you know it could actually be quite a quick job it, you know it it might not be as lengthy and um, you know uh, as daunting as it looks to you now. I'll add a couple of thoughts, maybe also just to, to spring to my mind. The first one is uh, we'd really need to know which Penguin iteration uh, the site was hit by. Uh, I think if it was the most recent one, 
it's probably going to be links that you've been building in the last year. Uh, if it's an older penguin, well, that could be something different again. And you may also want to get someone to appraise the situation to figure out whether you might be better off actually going with a new domain. Because that is always a possibility. Actually, we've got a question. Um, yeah, go ahead, Tim. Actually, flipping this around also, within this uh, recent penguin, there was also uh, seemingly panda recoveries. So uh, it may not actually be penguin that you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. You know, there could be a completely another situation in terms of a panda rather than a penguin. Um, so yeah, you know, you, you, I think you do need to just have a human look at this for you, um, give you some kind of idea, and then obviously, you know, uh, it would be up to you in, in, in which way to take it. And to throw even more confusion into the pot, there was also probably a pirate update. Uh, so depending on what type of content you have, uh, you could have been hit by, by multiple different things. The first thing you really have to ascertain is what it was that hit you. And you can probably do that from your analytics and based on the site you have. But I think the op should really come back and say, look, uh, this is when we were hit. Uh, this is the traffic we lost. And come back with the exact date. Excellent. All right. Um, uh, have we uh, covered this for um, uh, Tessa? I hope um, I'm not mucking things up too much tonight um, while, we fig while I figure this out. But um, um, anyway, um, let's, let's move on to question two. Um, it's from Pulkit Kurana. Um, he wants to know if he should um, dis disavow with some links. Um, he said he has been working on the backlink profile of, of one of my websites. And I came across some websites um, which are linking to my site um, on um, anchor text. Um, and um, he, he gives some examples. Uh, um, and the, the one thing that's common amongst all of these uh, um, is that they all have the same file name, even though they're across uh, three different um, sites. Um, and he, he, he said, I, I contacted the concerned person for link removal, um, but he, she said um, that the process is paid. Um, he said, uh, I've pasted these URLs uh, on a Google search box, uh, and uh, all, all of the, the above URLs are not crawled by Google. Well, I don't know how he gets, how he understands that that's happening. Um, and uh, maybe due to a penalty. Uh, he said, so all I want to know is, is that you, is using the disavow tool for, for these links uh, correct or not? Well, assuming he's read about the crawling part, if Google can't crawl it, it doesn't matter then. Um, so that's generally number one. Number two, I mean, you can use the disavow tool. Um, save, of course, you know, if you're saving an email and you've, you've basically said, hey, please remove me, and they said they can't because it was a paid-for venture type thing, then, um, it, you know, at least you've, you've got it there, and, you know, you can note to them and respond that you never paid for it. <coughs> um, I don't think you, three URLs are going to make a, enough of a difference, um, but, yeah, you can, as long as you've already not been deemed um, by Penguin, then you can always just uh, use the disavow tool to tell Google don't count these URLs coming into the, or these backlinks coming into the site. Isn't it just terrible that people have to worry about this type of garbage, you know? It's a couple of years ago, no one would be talking about this type of crap. It's Well, people asked for it. What can I say? They wanted the tool to disavow the leaks. They just got an additional um, 
request with Google when it came out with it as such. No, I'm more 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 saying that people are now are worried about people linking to them with anger text. I mean, that's that's what I think is is really pathetic. Oh, and yeah, I'm not yeah, talking no. off. I'm just talking about the whole situation itself. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, it's 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 bad. Like they should they should never have let it get to this. They really made a terrible mistake. I think the more time goes on, the more I think I really believe they made a terrible mistake with this with penguin. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's definitely um, it's definitely a focus of now doing more stuff that's really for Google's benefit than it is for the rest of the web or for users. I mean, they, these are things you're looking at. Like there's. I mean, it, yeah, it, it really is, uh, um, it's really for Google's benefit um, over anything, just kind of the lack of uh, ability, let's just say, for today that uh, the algorithm can't kind of make the determination um, between the type of weights uh, that are kind of coming into the site and determining what is natural and natural to the extent of what they need to be able to do. Um, mm. uh, I mean, it, it's unfortunate, but they, but they've like, definitely... Look at this horrible situation, this guy, he's, he gets, the, the response he gets from the site owner is, oh, it's a paid removal. I mean, you know, it's... Well, he didn't say it was a paid removal. He just said the process is paid. He didn't specify if the link, adding the link or removing the link is paid. I'd assume it's removing the link. Oh. Even if, I even guess. if... But I mean that, yeah. I mean I'm not surprised by that. I mean people are just, I gave you a link. Why would I want to remove? Like, or I somebody asked for this. Why would I want to remove? Or I'm doing this as a nice gesture. Yeah. You know, people, it's funny because it's like the concepts originally of link building is that it it meant you took time and effort to put it up. So now asking me to remove it is just going to piss me off because I put all that time and effort to put up the link. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, while all, like it, this is this is just some time. People are wasting their time trying to get this junk removed that they probably never put there in the first place. In many cases, and they could be focusing on their users, focusing on their site, like Google says they want you to do. But Google is just creating all this work for everyone. It's and worry, you know. I mean, for us, we don't care because we sort of know better. But for the average webmaster, you know, they go and they search search for news on Penguin and they see all this different news and different opinions and they've been told you've got to remove links and you've got to use a disavow file. It's just a waste of time. Yeah. Anyway. <coughs> Agreed. Anyway, I think that for the op anyway, all you need to do is just drop those three domains into a disavow file, the domain, not even the URLs, just the domains, and leave it at that. I and mean, just ignore these. Never bother even asking people to remove junk like this. Yeah, and dep I mean, and depending on how, how junky they are, if there's not very many, it's not something you even need to really put into the disavow tool. So it depends on your site. If you're at the edges, you know, if you don't have a strong backlink profile, a, a small handful of this junk can can ding you. It's it's well, yeah, but I mean, like if you're if you're around that edge anywhere, then that's a whole different story. But if it's you know you you small site, yeah, there's. Mm -hmm possibilities for that, but generally it's like... I'm guessing this guy's a small site, higher venues in London, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. Anyhow, I think the, I think the answer to the, the question is answered, Jim. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on um, to the next one. And Pulkit Curana, um, it, I think it's fairly clear. Just put them on your disavow file and uh, forget about them. Um, next uh, question that we have, um, just waiting for it to come up, damn it. Uh, this is one from Heather Watts um, on WordPress custom posts versus pages. She said, hi, I'm wondering if someone can answer a general question about WordPress custom posts versus pages. Um, does it matter which one you use um, from an SEO perspective? I have a website with an art portfolio. Uh, each painting has a page, and many pages uh, also include a, a write-up. I recently switched to a new theme, which has a fantastic portfolio option uh, I can use to display and organize everything. 
but it would mean I would have to switch all my all of my existing page content over the um, custom uh, posts. From uh, an SEO set standpoint, what should I do? Uh, thanks in advance to anyone that can offer insight. Well, I'm sure we can all offer insight here. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Anybody? Just, just seeing any uh, uh, out there to dry just after that comment. Um, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, to be honest, I'm not familiar with the uh, WordPress custom post against pages. Um, <clears throat> I usually, I mean, if you're, um, if basically, it sounds like you're using it as a CMS, or, uh, and. You know, my general preference is the usage of WordPress as a blog, so that just, I'm not, honestly enough, I'm not familiar with kind of using it as a website. As a blog, you know, regular kind of posts, blog posts are preferable than creating a number of pages, because that's kind of the structure of how you're using it, or the whole point of it as a blog uh, CMS. So, um, yeah, so I'm not able to really help when it comes to using it as a, as a site CMS. I see a, 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 one of our forum heroes uh, uh, from the SEO questions community on Google Plus, Greg uh, Barker. Uh, uh, he said, um, uh, he said, uh, and I, th I, I think I can agree with him. He said, but from an SEO perspective, it is the URLs that matter. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Kind of the URLs part matter. Um, but it also depends on if it's just a display and an organization thing. You still kind of, well, it probably won't matter a huge amount. It, there's a possibility that, um, that if, if it's just a, a CSS kind of layout change, then probably nothing. But um, if content is now going away or there's a whole restructure where the page is, so... Um, you know, uh, I don't know, links or content is hidden under different tabs now instead. There's a possibility of, of uh, how Google looks at that page will differ. So um, it, it also does depend on how things are changing. Um, but yes, the biggest, the first point is whether or not the URLs even change then. Excellent. Um, anybody else? I answered that, that question, actually, I saw it today, and I, I put a few answers, but uh, for a small site like the, the uh, like Heather's, it doesn't make, it shouldn't make any difference. Really, the architecture won't be affected whether you use one or the other in general. All things been equal, it's, there's going to be no difference. Yeah, I, yeah. I have Peter Driesen uh, on my phone, and he says it's all the same. And he wants to answer it, and he wants to get invited into the new the SEO questions. Okay, yeah, um, that, that that would be terrific. Um, uh, as soon as we're doing the, the next question, I'll, I'll I'll set him up. Okay. All right. Um, yes, there were a great many. Um, um, a answers given uh, on the SEA questions community on Google Plus for this one for Heather. Um, if you're following along at home, uh, um, you can find that post. Uh, if you just search for WordPress custom on, on the SEA questions community, I reckon that um, you'll find it. Okay, so moving on um, to our next question. This is um, from. Uh, uh, Tessa Bernacki again, uh, question four on your run list, it's uh, can I just delete uh, spammy pages? Um, Tessa said I use WordPress and there are multiple pages 
the previous person intended to be posts, but they did not do it correctly and added them as pages. The pages are spammy and offer no good content. Uh, can I just delete these pages or will that cause broken links? Yeah, just delete them. It'll only, it'll only cause broken links if the links were actually in the body content of the pages. Yeah, I, I agree. I would, yeah, I'd also say just delete them. Um, but I would just have a quick look in your um, webmaster tools and your links. Have any of those spammy pages actually, for some magical reason or another, got a couple of links? Uh, you know, like uh, any decent ones, and potentially that page um, that actually did develop some natural links. Uh, you might want to actually just uh, spend a bit of time fixing that one singular page and just keeping that one, or 301 it. But you know, for the rest, if they're just crap, they've got no links, they've never had traffic. Yeah, just delete them. Hello. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you, Tim. It's, it, it, um, I'm, I'm just getting my, myself together. Okay, so um, our, our answer for Tessa is to um, just just delete these. Um, okay. Sorry about this, guys. Moving on to the next question, um, it's from Sajid uh, Ali. Um, here's an easy one for you to answer, or at least I think it is. Um, which WordPress SEO plugin is good for Google? Um, SEO Yoast uh, versus all-in-one SEO. Uh, personally, I'd go with Yoast, uh, but just remember, it's only as good as how you manage it. Um, it's not, you know, good for Google in that sense. It's not like plug and play. You know, you need to manage it. You need to work through all the tabs. You need to set it up. So it's only as good as you set it up. Um, they have some great, um, uh, you know, Yoast provides a, a whole site um, on any different things. If you have any questions, don't understand it. You guys provide a whole sort of question and answer, backup, the whole thing. So, um, yeah, it's only as good as the way you implement it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Yoast is, does what it says in the tin. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, I um, saw the other answers on the SEO questions community on Google+, and... Uh, um, it looks like uh, the popular vote uh, is, is Yoast. Okay, and our next question. We've got 18 questions tonight. Um, this rate, we'll, we'll, we'll actually finish them all. Um, question six on your own list, guys, is um, um, a question from Alex McIll. Um, Alex uh, said, hello all. Um, he was wondering if he could ask what um, might be considered a, a dumb SEO question. Many of us know that hiding text behind an image and, or, and ma or making the text color the, the same uh, um, as the background is, is a big no-no uh, and that Google's algorithm is designed to detect hidden elements and penalize. Uh, upon uh, disabling CSS on my client's website, I noticed radio buttons um, um, were incorporated uh, in the in the main uh, navigation. Uh, these are used for functionalities such as activate, drop down, closing the menu, etc. These radio buttons only show when, when disabling CSS, uh, not when CSS is enabled. My question is, um, could Google's algorithms be seeing this as hidden elements, especially considering that the only function of a radio button is for it to be selected? Um, and he provided an image which. Which, um, you can see uh, on the uh, uh, SEI questions community on Google Plus. It's a unique question. Um, 
No, I don't see that being an issue. It's just a radio button. As long as it's not uh, um, the the text itself, it's not. Um, you know, it, think of it this way: it's um, <clears throat> as long as the control, you could kind of say, the base website that Google would see is not being um, hidden, the text is not white on white, that type of thing, then you're okay. Yeah, the radio buttons are just showing up when it's off. Eh. They don't care about radio radio buttons. They care more about the text and uh, out of anything from that. So it's just is the text in the hidden elements. Is that's that's kind of um, the main thing. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, there were a, a number of answers on on uh, the SEA questions community on on Google Plus, uh, and, and all, all more or less said the same as you, Mike. Are uh, um, not a concern. Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on uh, to the next. This is from Syed uh, Anwar, um, and um, I, I, th I think you've got some bad news for Syed. Um, my, he said, my keyword ranking is dropping. Um, it, it's dropping locally in Pakistan. Uh, uh, my, my keyword ranking dropped uh, today, Saturday, the 25th of October. Um, I checked on the Friday, the 24th of October. And my keyword keyword ranking uh, was in the top ten, um, and uh, for the homepage website keywords like online shopping in Pakistan and other internal pages. Um, in the morning, my website uh, major keyword ranking is down. Uh, I had I had uh, um, a four K uh, organic searches daily um, for Pakistan, but it's dramatically changed, and today. Um, I'm only getting uh, 600 searches uh, organically uh, today. Can anyone tell me if there's any Google algorithm update uh, um, on google.com.pk um, or if anybody has noticed uh, a dropped ranking uh, in local search engines um, or could anyone please tell me uh, um, if there is a solution uh, to this problem? Let's draw no um, answers um, from the uh, community. It isn't um, a local, it's not a local thing, is it? It, it? This is just he's lost his traffic from regular searches on Google. Yeah, it looks like a penalty, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. It could be, but it could, you, you wouldn't know. It could be Panda, it could be Penguin. Yeah, there were rumors of a Panda for around the 24th, 25th, so... There's that, but if it's local, um, um, <laughs> that's they, the they made some major changes. Online shopping. That sounds to me like uh, he's probably using thieves. Well, yeah, yeah, that's probably going to be more online shopping impact. Yeah, that might be much more towards Panda, if if anything, and that kind of closely matches up to what some. Some people were saying that there might have been a, a refresh with Panda um, yeah. around that time. Yes, uh, Lucas Regala in our community uh, um, posted about that. Um, and that would have been around about that time too. Yeah. And we're also... Penguin seemed to move also four or five days after it came out. So, I mean, it could be one or the other. It could be both. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds odd to be ranking for online shopping Pakistan. That that doesn't sound to me like a, a simple one to rank for. But I don't know. If it's we could see his website, it might be a bit easier. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's not a competitive keyword, but it, it is easy to rank. Yeah, I think it's the only keyword that we rank for. Um, um, I, I think if you do online shopping Australia on google.com today, you, you'll still find ShopSafe. It's about the only one we've got left. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, um, Syed, Amwar, uh, look, I, I, I'm sorry we couldn't provide a, a better answer for you. It looks like it, it's a penalty. Um, well, I, I, actually, I'll, I'll say that, um, but I, I have no clue. Would, guys, would you say this, this is clearly a penalty? Yeah, if your traffic turns off overnight. If, unless you've got technical problems with your site, and even then you wouldn't see it overnight. It's a penalty. Yeah. Um, and so, th therefore, you look at your practices. What 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 you're doing? Um, what what you're doing with links? Um, um, and look at it. May well be uh, once you assess it. Uh, please come back to SEO questions. Uh, the, the the community on Google Plus and uh, um, ask again for further advice uh, because that it, it it may be that um, that advice might be. Uh, um, to um, start with another website. I, I don't know um, until you get uh, um, the, d the details in, but um, I, it's certainly worth exploring and, and you don't have to do it on your own. All right, um, moving on to um, the next question. Um, I'll be able to speed these transitions up um, by next week, I hope. Uh, here's one from Nilima Ayanala. Uh, now, Nilima, uh, Richard and I were talking about Nilima uh, um, today, um, and um, you know we watch the people that answer questions or ask questions, I should say, on the SEO questions community on Google Plus, and um, um, Nilima's um, profile uh, has about five posts on it, all of them questions here. So uh, um, one, um, I. Um, uh, you know, if Nalima is genuine, um, then um, I thank her for her interest. Um, but if she, if she's not, um, um, uh, anyway, whatever. Um, her, Nalima's question was, "Hi all, can anyone suggest to me um, SEO tools that are mostly used um, to increase business growth?" Um, now, um, it, it, it uh, transpires from uh, other comments uh, on the uh, SEO questions community um, that this website is uh, a website, um, businessvibes.com. And it seems like, um, although Nalima started off talking about, um, it, this is another question we'll be dealing with a little bit later. Um, to, tonight, um, but it, it, it seems like uh, she started off talking about her site um, and uh, eventually was talking about this businessvibes.com being a uh, um, a client site. So uh, look, it's all 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 uh, very confusing to me. Anyway, guys, um, what um, do you have um, to answer for N Nalima? Lucky I had something to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it has been answered there, really. I mean, there's no specific tool out there that's going to create some magical, um, so, some magic for you. Um, you. She already says that she's got, you know, she's obviously using analytics and webmaster tools. Um, it's, uh, you know, how to correctly interpret that, um, data that you you get from these tools, because because that what generally helps you make the decision based upon the site uh, and how the users are interacting with the site. Um, one thing off the top of my head is um, check out the um, dashboards already created for analytics. There's some really great dashboards in there that people have created. They might be something specific to your kind of industry. 
where um, y you know people create all sorts of fantastic dashboards, which you can basically just plug into analytics, um, and it helps to pull uh, different metrics. Um, yes, this, you know, and and it and it helps to segment it. So it's 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 really great if you aren't if, if you don't know how to create your own dashboards, and that's uh, some place to look, and it helps to segment the um, details to what you really want to see or understand. Um, there is a tool which I haven't yet managed to have a play around with, which I'm planning on, and it's called Analytics SEO, um, which uses your analytics um, data to theoretically provide you with better informed decisions about your site. Uh, I haven't taken my trial yet. I, I intend to at some point this month. Um, and yeah, by all means, I can um, you know drop you a, a line, Nalima, and let you know how that um, how that you know if it may be of benefit to you. Excellent. Hello, Peter Dreesen. How are you, man? Hello, I'm great. How are you? Good, man. Good. Thank glad, you. To, glad uh, I can I can join you. Yes, yes, we're we're glad to have you come along. Okay, uh, let's let's move on um, to uh, our next question. Um, this is one from um, Mike Cook, who, who's not asked a, a number of questions of us uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, thank you for your interest, uh, Mike. Um, he's asking for the best tool for site heat maps, um, uh, preferably free if possible. Um, I see Dave Elliott uh, uh, in the community answers uh, on um, Google Plus uh, uh, said. Um, uh, we use Clicktail, Crazy Egg, or Session Cam generally. None of them are free. I was lucky enough to use um, Crazy Egg. Um, um, Andy Wigglesworth um, set me up on it. Um, I don't know how much. Cost, but uh, gee, it's really uh, it gives you a surprise uh, um, when when you see the see the results. Links that you think that are really important that nobody ever clicks on, and links that you you accidentally hide away. Um, but there's something that um, people are looking for. Surely, I'm not the only one with an answer to this question. There's a free one called ClickHeat. I'm not sure if it's been updated in a while, uh, but basically it's something that you you uh, serve up from your own from your own site. It's just a JS file, and it works with uh, MySQL and PHP, and it'll show you where people are clicking on your site. It's not it's not bad if you're looking for a free tool and you want to just see. It wouldn't be as as advanced as some of the uh, some of these ones, but uh, he did mention free if possible. If he searches for clickheat.js, he'll probably find it. Excellent. Uh, there might also be another one that works with uh, with um, oh, what's the name of the Google Analytics alternative, the free one? Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it. So stupid, I can't think of the name. But there's a free Google Analytics, analytics alternative. I think they might have click, uh, click heat maps in them also. And I just can't think of the name of it right now. I'll think of it when I'm not thinking of it. Okay, Richard. All right. Um, all right. Look, I, Mike, I, I'm I'm fairly sure that that's um, what you wanted to hear, and. Um, Let's move on with the next. Uh, this the is next. from. Um, the name, by the way, I'm getting a lot of feedback um, here. Um, oh, it might be you, Rob, if you can mute that second one. Um, 
Okay, uh, Valentina Huff um, asked a, a very good question. Um, how to deal with um, landing pages uh, for PPC. She asks, uh, is it bad from Google's standpoint for a company uh, to create thousands of similar looking landing pages, each one for a different company? The purpose is not for SEO um, or to rank them. The purpose is that they only serve as landing pages for pay-per-click ads. This is a, a common thing. Uh, um, landing pages and, and mini sites uh, for pay per click, and um, yes, I thought that was a, a very interesting question. Simply no index them. Or use canonical. But uh, yeah, same solution. <laughs> it prevents uh, the pages. Uh, so just. Or use no index or canonical. Mm, well, you have to have somewhere to canonicalize them too. I don't think that would work. I, I think. Um, I, I, well, actually, I, I agree with you both, but not not that I I know. And I, I've got a question for you, Richard. Um, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I agree that you should uh, no index them, um, but. Um, what about um, the no index pages? We'll still have um, uh, external links, um, um, like all sorts of links on them that, that might affect uh, the, the site's um, internal or in, inter external linking. Um, should should they um, also canonicalize them to the home page uh, to take take away that problem? I don't think you should ever canonicalize a page to a different page. Like I think canonical is for meant to be for similar pages. I'm working with this with a really big site at the moment, and it's a news site, and they they create their news stories on two different URLs on occasion because they want them to be in different sections, and then they they want to canonicalize them, and that's okay. But I think if you canonicalize page A to like your home page, I think Google is probably just going to ignore that. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend uh, canonicalizing to the home page, but if you have uh, similar looking land landing pages with similar content in it, then you can canonicalize uh, to, to one of them. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, well... But you're just tweaking on, on the keywords for, for the landing pages or optimizing it for AdWords for mm. specific campaigns, then it can be useful to get to use canonical links. Yeah, I'd no index them. That'd be my, I just have to say, my view would be just no index them. Don't let Google index them if they're not for SEO and if you're worried about that type of stuff. Much much safer than, than worrying about whether canonical will work or not. Yeah, and easier. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, indeed. Easier also, yeah. I've got a piece As on the links, Jim, the links is a different thing again. Like, it's a good point, like what would happen if there's links, but it, that will vary case to case, so... I've got one addition to add to the uh, paid advertising landing pages. And uh, that is basically utilizing subdomains and utilizing a third party service. Like, like I use Unbounce, and uh, it helps me to keep all of that, uh, those properties separate. So the only traffic that goes to that subdomain goes to the, uh, the actual landing page. And then they, you can do your A B split testing, and you've got no worries of Google actually finding um, any interference. And then you can move your findings over to your master landing page because you've already tested and AV split test and PCD and E. And then you can move all that right to the page that you know already works and converts. How do you find Unbounce? Are you happy with it? <clears throat> I've worked with Unbounce since they were in the beginning stages. Um, I, I didn't use them in the beginning, and then I used them uh, for a, lot, a few different larger projects and uh, very successful, and then I hadn't used them uh, for a few years, and, and since I've jumped back in, I really do like the the interface is really simple to use. Anybody could do it. I'm teaching my clients uh, how to log into their out at their own bounce account and make the changes for a test. You know, they can create their own test right on the fly and, and basically separate their traffic and say, I want 50% of my traffic to go here, 50% of my traffic to go here, or separate it even further, 25, 25, and 25. 
You know, that they really, and depending on how much traffic you're driving in your paid advertising campaign, will allow you to do those those mass segmentations. But if you're doing just you know 100 clicks or whatever, it's not going to be effective to do a separation of the, you know four different pieces. But uh, depending, I mean, if you're running 100,000 pieces of traffic to that page, you can do you know a lot of cool things with that traffic. Cool. Thanks. Okay. And then it basically is no followed as well, so it's already got the properties in there. You're just, you're creating a uh, uh, a new record in your domain, so it, you're you're pointing your paid avatar or your uh, subdomain to their server, so it's all hosted on their environment. So it's it's where it's is easy. all the data, by the way? Just out of curiosity, is it on Where's their all, server? It's all on their server, and you've got all your stats information. It ties into your analytics and your AdWords campaign, so you have all of the capability of of uh, looking through. Uh, as well as you can tag UTM codes from and within inside the actual URL, so you can see that in your campaign tab uh, within your analytics. So, I hope that helps. Yeah, interesting. Yep. Okay. Um, let's um, m move on um, to the next um, Valentina Huff. I, I hope that's the answer you were looking for. This is uh, from uh, Alexandre uh, Kowalsik, um, who uh, had uh, one of his articles uh, translated into Chinese. He said, uh, someone just translated one of my articles in, into Chinese um, and made a link to my original article at the end. Um, should I ask it to be removed or is it good? Uh, can it hurt SEO ranking uh, because of duplicate content? Um, should uh, I accept or refuse the pingback um, to appear on my site? No, no, refuse. No, don't ask them to use a canonical tag. Oh. Who put that up there? And was one 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 from our one of our forum heroes. Uh. Yeah, but that's wrong. Don't put the canonical tag with your website articles early. In it. That's completely wrong. Because they're not canonicals. One is in Chinese and one is in whatever language. So that 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 first suggestion there is is absolutely wrong. Yeah. Like I said, no, no, refuse. That's that's that'd be my answer to the three questions. Well, in in the in the in the, in the light of uh, nobody else answering, uh, um, we're going to have to call that the answer, Richard. Woohoo! I think it's it's good that somebody else translates your content and serves mm. serves another country or, or another language, so. Why uh, why block them or re refuse them? And it's it's they are uh, doing a good job uh, including your link or the original post. So I think it's a good job. Well, there is that, Richard. Well, what do you say to that? Nothing? Okay. I might have dropped off. Um, all right. Um, moving on to question number 12 on your run list uh, from uh, Ed Barnett. Uh, Ed said, um, I'm, working, uh, I, I'm working on websites for six very small, um, very local businesses. Um, Google Webmaster Tools report fewer than 1,000 impressions a month for most of them. Um, webs, Webmaster Tools also usually only displays fewer than half of the impressions and less than a quarter of the clicks. Um, is there any way I can find out what the rest of the impressions or clicks were for? Hey, 
I think what he's asking for is is looking for the the query reports to find out what uh, qu uh, keywords may be coming uh, through those impressions. I mean, that's something I show to to clients every all the time. But you know, you go through your your page details and you can look at what uh, you know Google's showing you for your impressions on your pages, and then you can go back into your analytics and look at your bounce rates. And then you can see, you know if you see a increase or a decrease in your uh, impression count, you can identify a traffic trend. In, in Webmaster Tools, uh, the default is now set to uh, web pages only. And you can switch that to all and see also the image and uh, mobile views and clicks. I think that's the answer. Yeah, you bring a good point. Matt Storms just posted uh, something about uh, the new tool functionality for mobile with inside Webmaster Tools. So that's something that just came into the dashboard as well. So I'm curious to take a look, at those, take a look at those reports. Yeah, that shows you the, the possible mistakes you make uh, on your website uh, for mobile. It's a bit fake. But, uh, it will get better, I hope. But that's something different than the question. It's really, it's really two questions, isn't it? Um, um, I mean, clicks he, he could get um, from uh, his uh, log files and impressions he could get from a ranking tool. I don't think he'll get all the information he's looking for. Google doesn't doesn't give it out anymore. I think he's looking for the keywords. I presume he's trying to figure out what the keywords are. Okay, I see uh, Mike and Fisher Kirstner is leaving us. Uh, safe journey to work, mate. What time is it in the USA? Uh, 6.20 a.m. 6.20. Well, look, th thank you for yet again getting up uh, so early in the morning to join us. Yeah, no worries. So, thanks for having me. Take care. Okay, mate. Yes, thank you. Any more comments for Ed Barnett? All right, uh, we'll move on to the next. But uh, Ed, uh, I, I hope uh, that that was what you're looking for. But if you need any more, please ask again uh, on the SEO questions community. Um, here's one question 13 on our list uh, is low hit Melvia um, on penguin and link buying. Um, Lohit said, uh, thanks to everyone for looking onto my post and giving suggestions. Very kind. Uh, thank you, Lohit. Um, she said, I have a, I have a website. Oh, this is the one um, that, that is really sad. Um, okay, uh, Lohit said, I have a website, and for that I hired a, an SEO expert, and he was doing well enough uh, to uh, bring my website onto... Um, the first page for around 10 keywords. I just, I just know what Richard Hearn's about to say. Um, we're, we were uh, almost in between 5th to 10 pages um, for all keywords. Um, but suddenly, uh, Penguin 3 hit my website and all my keywords went back. 2 to 3 uh, keywords around 30 to 34th page and some between the 13th and 19th pages. And they are still moving back and forth to plus two or minus two pages every day. My question is, how can I get my ranking back to the previous stage? And is it worth uh, to make more good, good backlinks and doing SEO? Some people say that you need to start everything new. Um, but that is not possible for me. Um, because um, I don't have uh, uh, much financial support. 
I have already invested a lot of my savings. Um, please uh, suggest to me that the best strategy to get my e-commerce business back on track um, with the least possible time. Uh, my website is www.leatherhandmadebags.com. Thank you very much. Tim, you are screen sharing, eh? Tim Kappa. Bloody hell, not again, Jim. <laughs> um, oh, gosh, how do I... Mm. Well, that's, right. that's quite good. That's, that's the handmade bags. Yeah. Um, the, the, the thing here is, um, you know, I, I don't want to be mean, but, you know, you said you hired an SEO professional. Well, that, that bloody... Um, SEO professional should uh, flame and be shot. Um, the thing is, uh, do we actually know what it is? Uh, it sounds certainly to be to be a uh, penguin. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of things in terms of your site, which your SEO professional, and I say that with uh, uh, with 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 uh, I'll just shut up. Um, right, look, yeah, with irony. Look, the thing is, firstly, we've you know, in terms of let's just look at the site as it is. Firstly, um, we've got no introduction in here. We've got a lot of images, um, which are all obviously we've got some old. You know, we've got they're they're all image marked up. Um, the thing is, uh, we need a little bit of an introduction here. Who are you? What do you do? What makes your bag unique? What? Why, if I landed on this page, would I want to purchase one of your bags? Um, who, you know, uh, where do your bags come from? Where do you source your leather from? Or do you purchase them in uh, as they are? You know, what makes me? What makes you different? I need to know that. I want to see that on the site. Um, so perhaps consider reducing your main banner size a little bit here or at least giving me the information on your banner uh, or give me a bit of introductory text before I start you know you start showing off all your products um, that's you know certainly uh, one thing I want to see um, straight away there um, uh, everything's freezing at, uh, at the minute Um, has your SEO said anything to you at at this point in time? Has he? He has. Uh, um, I just want to, if you just bear with me, I'm just having a quick little run through, um, and everything's freezing again. I think it's probably time also to try and do some expectation setting with the person who's posted this problem. Uh, they said, what's the quickest way and the cheapest way for me to get my rankings back? Uh, they have to be realistic and they're probably going to have to wait. They could be waiting six months. They could be waiting a lot longer. And that's if they can get their rankings back. I can't actually just get into some of my tools to see what the, uh, what the backlinks are looking like. But... I presume that this is links that were built in the last in the last 12 months, and you know I think you're going to have a hard time getting your rankings back. I don't think you're going to get your rankings back. I think when you remove these links, you're going to be back to where you were before you actually engaged this ex SEO expert. Um, so it's a tricky one. It really is a tricky one. Um, I'm trying to look at the links. Can you see the links, Tim? Yeah, you've um, yeah. I mean, he's yeah. yeah you've got um, you know he has trying to spread them out, and you've got sort of you know um, 
actual d uh, domain domain things. But then you've got handmade leather backpacks, hand handmade leather bags, leather backpacks, leather messenger bags, leather. Yeah, you know, I mean, your link profile yeah. is pretty much all. Um, yeah, unnatural, and even the oh god, uh, so the ones which are, yeah. Oh so, <laughs> um, so look, the thing is, these need to be removed. The first thing I would do uh, is um, in your webmaster tools, download uh, all your links. Um, And then it's a question of deciding what is. Uh, you're going to need to educate yourself here, uh, because of course, when you say what is the cheapest way, the cheapest way is your own time. Um, you're going to need to a bit of education. Uh, educate yourself. You're going to need to understand what is a natural link and what is an unnatural link. Um, if you search uh, Google guidelines, they have you know a page. Um, you know, on uh, what constitutes a natural or unnatural link, or rather an unnatural link. Uh, and there's a lot of things written out there about it now. Um, and I would prepare a disavow file and disavow these domains. Now, the thing is, is as Richard mentioned, <laughs> you've pretty much taken away or going to disavow all those links which were helping you pre the uh, penalty. So you're going to need to start working on that again. Now this also gets back in terms of the sense of your site. Um, I'm, uh, same again, I've just flipped onto another page in your site, you know, your messenger satchel bag page. Uh, literally there is nothing on there. Um, it's just got your products. It doesn't tell me wh what a messenger bag is or a satchel bag. Yes, I can quite clearly see it, but what, uh, like I said originally, what makes it unique? Why do I want to buy this? I, I, you know, welcome someone in. This is your opportunity. If somebody lands on this page, that's your one opportunity to actually tell them about you, get it across that you know you use, uh, you know you source quality leather or we source, you know, uh, you know all our bags which we are sourced are hand checked by our leather expert, and you know all our stuff is. You, you, you get the idea. This is a website is like your shop. If somebody walks in and you just ignore them and just let them look at the things, you, you're not engaging, interacting, and they're more than likely just walk out. That's the same thing with a website. A website isn't something magical. It's it, the situation is that you need to engage with them, and by engaging with them, um, people uh, will spend more time on your site. They're more than likely actually sharing your site, mentioning your site because of your engagement with them, and and therefore you're building natural links and natural authority out there. Um, Uh, just having a quick look at your blog. All right, we've got one uh, post on there. Uh, so the thing is, you know, uh, you've got one post. Um, who have you engaged with? Who have you shared that with? Uh, you, you need to, you need to get a little bit more creative on how you're going to mark. You know, uh, your blog is a great way to get your product out there. Um, you know, create some great, great stuff um, on, you know, picking uh, how to how, how to spot vintage from non-vintage kind of thing, for example, uh, on leather. Um, you know, create a great article, some great images, um, and then once it's out there, you know, try and engage with people that have already built up their profile, that already... Um, you know, have got great engagements on their site or with um, you know people, uh, and 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 that's how you try and push it out. That's how people see your blog, see your product, share it, start building up your brand and your authority. Um, you know, a website, there, there, there's nothing magical to it. It's exactly the same as old stores. You know, a traditional bricks and mortar store. You need to one advert 
in the you know in your local magazine is not going to sustain you and your business you know from from you know for 20 years um, it's it's a regular thing and it you know you, you you need to start thinking about marketing there's no magic pill that you can just pay some shady SEO guy who's going to do some work and obviously you know as you know it all comes back on you um, it, it takes a long time sustained um, commitment and unfortunately you have been stung by this person and you know you say you've kind of spent your life savings on it which you know I, I really sympathize with um, but yes you need to educate yourself on links and you need to educate yourself on landing pages um, you need to really start educating yourself on your on your site because you, you are the person that's in control uh, and you need to take control I think they have to really lift the penalty. Like I think I actually quite like their site. I think their site, you know, I think most of what you said is is really valid and it's it's useful. But I think their site is actually better than at least fifty or sixty percent of the sites I see online. Um, but they have to lift the penalty, which means they've got to get rid of the links. Whether they disavow them or well, it will be disavowing. They won't be able to remove the type of spam that this guy has created. And then the point is they're going to be back to to point zero. So they're going to have to rebuild their ranking, and they're going to have to do it the slow and painful way, or the real way now. They won't be able to take shortcuts. So, you know, I think they have to be realistic, and they have to, you know, I think the time horizon they're looking at is probably 12 months. If they get out of the penalty in six months, and if they have another six months of actually trying to build the rank up again, um, but it's going to be slow and painful. Uh, I quite like the site. I like the domain. I think the domain is quite nice. I would have rather uh, I would have rather have uh, handmade leather bags, but it's still quite good. I think the site is quite good, and they just gotta lift the penalty and start again. But the penalty won't be lifted probably for at least four to six months, even if you did everything right today. So they've got to be aware of that. Okay, um, I see William Rush uh, said in the chat um, yeah, um, guys, that he, he's pulled it up on SEMrush. Yeah, can you guys see my screen? There we go. I'm not sure I trust it. I, I'm not sure I trust them for such low low levels of traffic, to be honest. Yes, I know, but what I'm looking for is this drop, and, mm. and basically what I see is two different drops on certain uh, days on different penalties, and I'm looking at that based off of what you guys have all kind of uh, detailed out. I'm thinking it's more of a panda-related issue uh, than just a link-related issue, but still with the links, you might have to clean that up. I'm, I, and this is just rough draft here, but you, know, you can also go into um, your position change. But I want to go back to June 2014, and then uh, they picked back up in August 2014. Um, and then they peaked, and they dropped back down in October 2014, which would explain another panda drop. Those are yeah, those. Take a look at their links, and you'll probably see. The minute you look at their links, you'll probably. I mean, their. Oh, their link backlink is not. I mean, sorry guys, but SDM Rush is not what I use for uh, link profiling. I'll, I'll use Majestic. Uh, yeah. To do. Uh, but what I always do is I'll look for you know when they actually dropped. And if you're looking at like October 21st, you, you can kind of go back in the, the pattern when even you know. So here's where those those dates indicate more of the what uh, there was panda and penguin. So you guys were talking about an overlap. So totally possible. But I I didn't look at their link profile yet, and I won't use this tool to do that with. But like I said, I use Majestic to do that. But I just wanted to quickly show the, the overview, and that's kind of what I. Those are the two reports that I, I primarily use this uh, interface for, is to quickly identify when the drop happened. Uh, and so you can see May 2014, they had the organic traffic, but then they suddenly dropped uh, in June. Uh, and I don't remember which version on June 2014 was, but I believe that that was a Panda uh, release. So they, they went through a deadline for quite some time and it looks like you know they maybe they hired another SEO team and got them back for a little bit and then basically just uh, that update uh, didn't like what they did maybe uh, but it's a nice site I mean I think there's a lot of opportunity for them so. 
That's all I got, guys. Jim? This screen sharing is great. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, Lahit, uh, Melvia, uh, I really feel for you. I really do. Um, you've been, I mean, it's easy uh, to make a site rank if you don't care if it's going to last. Um, and that's obviously what uh, this SEO uh, has done. Um, and if I were you, I'd be sacking him uh, tomorrow. Um, and um, that you, you've really got to make... Well, am I, am I summing this up correctly, guys? Um, but Lahit really should consider um, starting a new site rather than trying to recover. I mean, given that Penguin's only just run and, um, you know... It, it 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 was a a, a, a minor thing at best, um, and goodness knows when it's going to uh, run again. I don't know. I think he, it looks like he's put a fair bit of investment into the site and into the branding, and the domain is quite nice. If it was me, yeah. I'd 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 think about keeping it. You know, I'd I think it could be a a winner in the long run. Yeah, I mean, look, this we're only looking at. I mean, obviously. You, it's not webmaster tools and we don't have an exact thing but we, we're looking at 3,000 links that can be cleaned up pretty quickly you just need to just then you know start doing things the right way and yeah, this isn't like a fifty thousand. This isn't like a fifty thousand links. You know, it's going to take too long, and let's start again. No, uh, th th this this is this is doable. You know, it's recoverable. It, they've, it's a nice site. It's brandable. You know, they're just um, yeah, and three and a half, four thousand links is 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 it. You know, it's it's doable. Um, but they just need to start thinking about you know. Actually, in terms of marketing, and not these snake oil, you know, magic pushing. They really wind me up. Mm -hmm. He's got to be realistic, though. He shouldn't rush. I mean, that's what's got him where he is. He looked for a cheap option that probably was going to work quickly, and now he's got to be patient and he's got to be able to knuckle down and hopefully keep it afloat until he can bring it back, but probably 12 months minimum, I think. Cool. I don't think he'll uh, build the same site he has in 12 yeah. months, to be honest. It looks like he's, like, I really, I like the branding, I like the domain, I think he should keep it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, now, no, no, William, uh, William Rock, uh, we, we certainly don't mind your screen sharing. Especially uh, Semrush, um, we should uh, say that Semrush uh, are kind enough to give uh, give uh, uh, our panelists here a, a guru copy of uh, Semrush for their use, um, and uh, you know to analyse sites um, that come up on SEO questions. So no, I don't mind you sharing that at all. All right, and thank you. All right, here's another one from Nalima Ayanala. Um, this is the one on um, businessvibes.com. Um, Richard Hearn will have something to say about this one. But uh, anyway, Nalima Ayanala asks, uh, uh, says, uh, Hi all, I'm working for an event management website. I, I want to know one thing. My website has a good Google rank. Um, but there is no keyword ranking and no traffic which affects the growth of my business. Can anyone tell me how I can get traffic to my website? Should we give a bit more context, Jim, and just mention some of the comments later on and the fact that this person is, this site is a client site for the person who's asking this question, according to what they said later on. So this person seems to have represented themselves as a professional to help them to do this work and the Google rank they're talking about is obviously page rank 
Yeah. Which is is not great, you know. I think we all know it. Like we'll all be, we're all shaking our heads here. You know what this? You know what this side? If this if this side has hired this person, they're gonna end up like the last guy with the letter with the handmade letter bag site. You're absolutely correct on that. I mean, we've got too many um, of these, in pop and we've had that through the years, though. I mean, we've we've all in the panel here. We've all been in the industry for since day one, uh, or most of us. But uh, it's changed. I mean, if you look at Google, it's always evolving. I mean, look at where it's going to head in 2005, or sorry, 2015, with uh, smartwatch technology and uh, the new technology that app developers have in in. Uh, for the APIs, is, everything is going to be changing. It's, it's beautiful, but then with, without understanding that knowledge and, and moving with change, you're kind of dead in the water. You're going to be, like that. Like you said, the guy that hired that other firm before, uh, you're going to end up with the same problems, especially if this guy's right and uh, this type of uh, question out here on the forum. I, I, I don't know. Thanks for posting it, but I don't know. Uh, I think there's some things that you can study up on. I think they need to look in the mirror and they need to ask themselves, are they really ready to be to be doing this for a client? And I understand everyone has the right to work and everyone everyone starts somewhere. Uh, but maybe you need to sort of inner reflect and, and say to yourself, well maybe I'm not ready for this sort of level and I need to learn a bit more and maybe go and work for somebody and then hopefully in the future I'll build up my knowledge, my expertise and I can do this for client sites. But you know, and I, I, it's it, it's it's not fair for us to to you know to be overly negative. This person, like I say, everyone has to start somewhere. But I think you have to be careful. You could ruin your reputation like forever by by offering something that is going to do a lot of damage to people. So I, I really think this person should just sit back and decide. You know, really, should they be offering this service? If if indeed they are offering the service. Yeah, and then you also have to think. Uh, you know. What type of sli a client site is this? Is like this maybe a church site, uh, or is this you know something he's just helping out with? He or she is just helping out with um, at the time and say, oh, you know what? They've given me the opportunity to learn from their website, and so maybe this person's going out and learning. So we have to also look at that way too. I think you know it's not mm -hmm. not a negative. We we look at these a lot in the forums and a lot of questions we feel like this, but. Um, we do have to look at it as what what size of the project is this. We we work with a lot of webmasters here that are you know brand new as well. List learning. We had I did the same thing. I mean I worked on back in what 1998. I had my first website and uh, learned how to actually you know build beautiful stuff that I thought was beautiful at the time. And then you know as I moved on, I look at it and laugh. But uh, I had to learn. I had to build up my skills, and I'm still doing that. But we also have to keep our skills. Too. You know, there's the, the technology is always going to be advancing in our industry, uh, and we've chosen to stay in that industry and move our knowledge and, and skill sets for those clientele. But going back to the small one, there's there's definitely ways that you can learn, and as long as you're actually sharing to that client or that person that's giving you a chance that you are brand new and you're still learning, and you know you don't set bad expectations. Because yeah, you don't want to re uh, ruin your reputation, like you said. And, I mean, that's the first thing. As as you're building into this industry, your reputation is you, uh, or your company, and then your company who they are as well. Each one of those has a reputation within the company as well. So, yeah. look at your company. All right, I'm done. I'm on my off my pedestal. Oh, well, we didn't think you were ever on it, um, David uh, William. I should say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. So am I. Okay. I suspect also this site and um, the, the 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 person who posted the question mentioned the site was new, but I, I took a look back and the site has been around for a couple of years and I think it was probably hit by something in two thousand thirteen. Okay. Uh it looks like it was hit previously and maybe it's recovered slightly. Um but it's not a new site. They mentioned it was a new site, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one. The site also, I mean, I think I often wonder why people would hide behind who is privacy when they have a proper business. That is something I always ask. It's a, it's a, that's a tangent, by the way, but it's worth putting out there. And it's a big site, from what I can see. 
It's not a small site, so. Okay. Anyone else on this one? Yeah, just off the top of my head. Um, and it's got nothing to do with the actual question of how I'm going to rank. Um, well, just off the top of my head, looking at the site, um, uh, and I'm not going to tell you how to rank uh, as in, in that fact. This is what you should be doing for this client. Um, this, you know, technically, I mean, I still, you know, without diving in, I don't really know exactly what you're doing, but you're putting suppliers and sources in touch with businesses. Uh, that's what I can make out from your top line. Um, so, um, possibly, possibly just give a slightly clearer explanation on your site. But this is what you should be doing. If this is what you're doing, and you, you know, reckon you do it, is it socially? Uh, oh no, just access. You should be getting in touch with um, all these different countries' trade organisations. Am I still? You're breaking up a little. I think it's bandwidth, Tim. Yeah, you should. You know, the the, the thing here is you uh, purport to be putting business to business, and you know, uh, companies, industries, and their goods all in one place. Well, what I would be doing is I would be speaking to all these trade trade sections of all these different countries that you list on your site, um, and really really stepping up to the plate now and actually creating a business you know that is top quality um, so you need to create those connections with all those trade uh, trade uh, bodies within all these countries that you've listed on your site uh, get them involved get them involved in your social um, start tagging all the the, the, the big players in uh, in terms of you know uh, the investments and foreign investments and 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 business and uh, really start going to town on that because that is what you're purporting to do uh, and you really need to you know kind of get these things going. Um, that is probably the first thing that I'd be looking at on terms of this. I would you know I know you're linking to all these other uh, you're linking to all these other uh, you're linking to other newspapers and news. Why don't you get a team of writers on board and instead of just linking straight out in terms of news items to other sites, uh, start actually putting that news in your own words, how it relates to your customers on your own site. Um, you know, there's there's a lot you can be doing here. Um, you know, really a lot uh, you can be doing, and um, start thinking about. You know, you've take you've bitten off a, a kind of a global a global trade kind of thing, um, and you really need to step up and 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 start thinking about how you're actually going to market this. Who wants to use it? How can I market to them and start engaging with these people? And that's it. My rent is over. <laughs> okay. Anybody else um, like to do some hand waving? All right, um, uh, Nalima. Um, that's um, that's our answer. The next um, question is from another question from Mike Cook. It's question 15 on our run list. Looking for a, a good feed plugin for Facebook. And Mike said, I'm trying to find a good feed plugin for Facebook to, to show uh, um, latest posts um, for WordPress. Um, does anyone have any recommendations? I see somebody on uh, the community, Kara Safon. Uh, Ek Penyong uh, said uh, that he uses uh, Facebook Publish. I haven't heard of that. What does it do?
Anybody? I see we've got six viewers on tonight. Must have caused some interest. Uh, if you're watching us, thank you very much. Uh, it's your uh, participation that makes uh, what we do uh, um, worthwhile, and for that we thank you very much. No answers uh, for this besides uh, uh, our community answer from the SEA Questions community on Google+. Okay, my cookbook, um, Facebook published, um, apparently, from Caressa von uh, Ekpenyong. Yeah, sorry, I was, I was actually fielding a call. Um, I would probably say that just go out on the WordPress forums and actually start researching what others are using, um, and then look at the reviews. Um, the, the big thing you're going to want to do before you even accept um, a WordPress plugin for anything is make sure that the security uh, is actually intact, because the last thing you want to do is bring a module in that's going to actually you know, hurt your site in a different way. So just something to think about when you're looking for a plugin. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to question 16 from Dave uh, Elliott. Uh, this is a question he answered himself. Uh, um, and uh, Dave, I know you watch um, our Hangouts. My, my, I see that you said on the community uh, that you answered it, but maybe uh, a, a good thing might be to actually put the answer there in case somebody looks it up in 18 months time and uh, wants the answer but they can't find Dave in a hurry. Anyway, Dave said, um, he said he's trying to sort some stuff out in SEO tools for Excel. Does anyone have a formula um, for recreating the acquisition channels default, ch default ch channel grouping in, in Google Analytics? Um, I can get the medium out of it, but this doesn't contain social, which is annoying. It was one of those times when I wish Alistair Lattimore was here. He did, he did turn up earlier, but uh, um, dropped off uh, for some reason. So let's see. The, the, he's able to get the mediums, is that what I understand? But he can't get the social um, pieces, so he can't really kind of dig deeper into the social analytics for... Google Plus per se, or Facebook, or because basically you have all the tabs in your information, then you can go through even uh, your uh, flow through data. I think it's flow through reports, uh, but that one will actually go through in detail, and you can actually go through and segmentate even your social medium out of that, and then watch your um, visitor flow traffic, so you can get a better gauge of where they're going through the funnel once they get there. Similar to when uh, you're actually analyzing a page coming in for your analytics and it's landing on a page and you're looking for bounce rates and possibly improvement opportunities to get them to the next level of the hierarchy in your website. Uh, same thing with social. You're going to be able to see that into main... Uh, they're, still, they're getting better with their analytics reporting, but I think that the other tool right now I'm actually looking at playing with... Um, well, I won't name them right now, but... Uh, there's a couple tools out there right now that I'm still playing with, and uh, one of, they, they've got some fantastic dashboards and uh, allow me to, to quickly identify what's happening with uh, Hangouts, uh, social on Google+, Plus, as well as uh, other as aspects, but um, we'll talk about that next time, after I get a little bit more uh, time under my belt with it. Okay. Professor Taki wants to do you um, get into some of this? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, moving on um, to our next question, and, and Dave Elliott, um, I hope that's the answer that uh, you were looking for. Um, question 17 uh, is from Roderick Van Vinst. Um, on checking HTML sitemaps for 404 errors and redirects. Um, Roderick said, hi all, um, what's an easy way to check HTML sitemaps for 404s or redirects? I need to check a rather large one which would take a while to check manually, one by one. Cheers. 
Screaming Frog will do it, but uh, it's not free. Ah, there you go. Usually I use Screaming Frog. Ta-da! What's he said in the community there? He said, uh, I usually use um, Screaming Frog for these things. However, when I do check the URL of the HTML sitemap only, and by looking at uh, outlinks, it gives me way more info, including images and whatnot. Yeah, um, you can filter. There's a filter drop down. You can select HTML. All right. Screaming Frog. But also, I think he. He'd probably be better off to use like a text sitemap or something like that, not another HTML one. Yeah, the other difference that Screaming Frog does offer as well. So Screaming Frog is good also to find um, if you've got 301s or 302s, so different redirects. So that's another thing that you can look at while you're actually scrubbing through your sitemap. So the tool allows you to do a lot more than the average uh, going through a spreadsheet and uh, doing it the old way. I, I used to do it all by hand and I was running you know, 2,000 products or so and uh, I had to go through the same problem but I did find Screaming Frog a long time ago and uh, that's definitely one of my go-to tools for uh, looking for you know, issues with canonical tags especially. Okay, so um the other, the other the other thing that um, uh, well, I, I actually answered uh, or put, put one of the answers on the, the the community on Google Plus, and really, if he's got an issue with with a site map that's got um, uh, 404s and redirects, wouldn't it be just as easy just to instead of going through the an, a, a static site map, um, wouldn't it be just as easy to recrawl the site and and um, Put up a new um, sitemap. I think so, anyway. I think um, so. But and that's normally what I suggest is basically going through and, and doing running a site on the actual audit because you, you might have an old sitemap and somebody else might actually put a new page in there or if you didn't know. Depending on how big, big that uh, query set is, if you just rerun it, you're going to find additional things that is, that's going to be not in your report just by looking for 404. So I think taking a step at the entirety of the health of your site first and then put your site map out there because otherwise that site map's not going to do you any good if those pages are broken. Okay. All right. Um, question 18 um, is a question from uh, our very good friend uh, Lucas Regala. Um, from Poland, I think, um, and uh, I'm not sure of the date, but I think this was posted around about the 25th. Uh, he said, is Panda rolling now? I, I see huge increases for domains having issues um, which feed pa the Panda algorithm. They lost visibility exactly one month ago, and now they are back. Um, we were cleaning the index because of duplicate content issues about 16,000 sub-pages uh, removed due to cleaning. Oh, he said, uh, fun fact, um, Google uh, totally gives a shit about redirecting old uh, URL structures to another. Um, so uh, I had to make a 404 on every soup single that duplicated wrong or broken URL and remove 16K URLs manually. Um, he said, "You can laugh out, uh, laugh la out loud at me on on the uh, dumb SEO questions uh, hangout." We wouldn't laugh at Lucas, would we? I think uh, I, I would give him kudos for going through and working on his pages and actually making the effort to do the cleanup work that's actually required to come back and he showed signs of coming back. Uh, Panda 4.1 did do that. Uh, people that were um, possibly flagged before and cleaned up their mess did come back. Other ones, a lot worse. So, 
uh, kudos again for cleaning up your stuff. Nobody's going to laugh at you. Actually, this is a great read. Uh, the the uh, questions uh, on the um, um, which can be seen on, on the SEO questions community on Google Plus. Uh, uh, he really knows his stuff, Lucas. So anyway, um, was this his? Sorry, this was his domain that actually lost visibility and then came back after he cleaned out the sixteen thousand earls, is it? I think it was a client site. Uh, right, okay. It was a site he was uh, working on. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's nice, eh, to be able to drop, like, lose traffic and one month later get it all back again. Isn't he lucky he didn't get hit by Penguin? Oh, he may have. I'm not, you know. I didn't read all the way through it, but uh, may have actually had some type of penalty with that, but not just duplicate content. Most of the people we've been seeing in the forums, the Webmaster Tool forums, uh, have had a combination efforts. Um, it's not just one thing or the other on this last batch of updates, but uh, I, I, I expect something in the future uh, to even be more impactful. But this, this reminds me of a, a client that I've been helping that got hit back in 2010 and uh, now has basically recovered with the same things uh, that Lucas has done. Um, very aggressive, very knowing their business, knowing what their clients are doing and, and everything else, but still affected and felt that pain and, and were very angry, and it took them this long just to recover. Um, so they've been kind of just holding down the fort with their business. You know, layoffs happened. Um, now they're actually rehiring because of organic traffic, but they got shut off for... Other reasons like uh, you know, their paintball industry, so the paintball advertising is completely gone in the uh, United States for a shopping fee. So, you know, right before the holiday season, um, we was hoping to get those things back. But just like this, you know, it's a it's a good sign to see those sites finally coming back. But, but they had to do the the, the work, to, the hard work, to get back in the index. And I think that's what a lot of companies out there are forgetting about is. We, you can disavow all you want, but if you didn't actually try your hardest to try to call the companies or email the companies to get those links removed, um, I mean, I've done it for clients. I mean, they've come to me with companies that have marketed, you know, all over the place for them, and I knew that that was coming. But how do you protect the company that already has those problems? And what I have found is really to push them forward. Get their website dialed in. Get those bounce rates down. Get the visitor. Uh, flow through, you know, where are they going? What's the goal? What are you, what are you talking about? I think, uh, Jim, and you guys talked about this earlier in the show, which is, you know, provide quality. What are you about? Um, who are you, and why should I buy from you? Why do I need to go to you versus the guy down the street? Make that difference. Make the um, the website rock. You know, it's not just a, it's not just a, uh, what do they call it before? Splash page. It's, it's now an actual real company online presence, just like if I was to walk through your storefront. Okay. All right. Um, let's um, move on um, 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 from from there. Um, we've yet again um, we've we've um, uh, finished. Um, um, all of the questions uh, asked on the uh, SEO questions uh, community on Google Plus. Um, we've done it again for yet another week. Um, now we move on to our weekly SEO news roundup. Um, we have a, a community on Google Plus um, called the SEO News Community, um, and in which we post links. Uh, Edwin Yonk uh, is probably the most prolific. Uh, poster, and we post their uh, um, items of interest that um, pop up um, um, from uh, time to time. We've only got five items or four items tonight. Um, the first one is on um, uh, Hotels.com, uh, an Expedia property uh, busted for buying links. Um, I really feel sorry for the guy. Um, 
um, who emailed out um, from uh, a hotels.com email address uh, suggesting to bloggers that um, he would um, pay them for uh, what he termed partnering with us. Do you think he um, still has a job? Well, I, 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 I don't know, Richard, but uh, may, maybe I don't think so. I doubt it. Silly, you know? He, was just, he just did something silly. He didn't know what he was doing, probably. And he may have been under a lot of pressure. He, I'm sure he was. All the OTAs are under a lot of pressure now. So... This is something that you he actually said in the email was five, six years ago when you think it was silly then, you know? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Google takes any action against them. They may get a, a, a small slap on the hand or something. Well, they they are fairly huge. Um, um, I, I have a friend who who works for Expedia, mm -hmm. um, and um, um, I, I was mentioning my friend uh, Alistair Lattimore, um, who works for the What If Group, and uh, he said, uh, "Well, he'll be working for us soon." <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Because they just paid, <laughs> Expedia just paid $700 million to buy um, What If. Um, yes, um, and it, it, uh, I guess that they, they get to a certain size and, um, I mean, is it their fault? Um, because this is really a, a, a like an artificial world that we live in, where um, um, we're allowed to have links, we're allowed, but we must know follow, uh, or we must do this, we must do that. Um, we want you to become a, an, an author. Um, here's your here's your author. Um, oh no, no, we don't want, we don't want you as an author now. And, I mean. It, 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 Richard, would you say that we're, we're, we're living in a mad, mad, mad world these days? No, I think it's just different. You know, it's like everything else. It's There's progress and things change. And this person didn't really keep up with change. Or maybe they were brand new. Or maybe I would assume they didn't really know what they were doing. Uh, you know, I, I, I think this is just one of those edge cases. It's, it's not something you're going to see too often these days. Five years ago, you used to see this all the time. People were outing everybody for doing this stuff. But I think people are just probably a little bit shocked that actually someone would still try this out at this stage, especially from some from a company so big. You know, they were just a, a sitting duck for someone to out them. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else? I see Barik Lebunski has uh, joined us from Canada. Hi guys, how are you? I'm well, thank you, man. Um, Tim Caffey, you're not muted. Um, you can go ahead. Okay, let's 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 move on um, from uh, um, hotels. Uh, dot com and uh, look at the, our next uh, news item. Um, is my is my screen blank? Is it? Okay. This no, is, um, it's not. This uh, I can see everything. Th thank you, um, Beric. Um, this this was an article. Uh, Posted, uh, I think, by um, oh, it was posted by Michael Fisher Kirshner, um, who's at probably either still in transit or uh, just uh, just arrived at work after leaving us about, about an hour ago. 
Um, Dave Elliott said that, um, um, well, I, in a nutshell, what, what this story is about um, is that um, webmasters who block uh, Googlebot from crawling their CSS files or their JavaScript files um, won't be ranked uh, um, at their optimal level because um, Google is now um, pre-rendering or rendering uh, um, websites um, with uh, CSS and JavaScript and if Googlebot is blocked of course uh, that, that can't be done successfully. Um, Dave Elliott said, um, uh, I thought we knew this a few months ago and I guess it's be and because we, we're always a, a few months behind you, uh, Dave Elliott. Um, any comments on this article, guys? I, I basically, uh, we've talked about not hiding CSS and JS for many years, actually, back in... Uh, I believe it was 2006, 2007, I think, uh, down at Webmaster World, Matt Cutts actually even talked about this. Um, and he basically just let everybody know this is something that we're looking at and this is how uh, we've de detected uh, you know, different spam pieces. I mean, you could take a cascading style sheet, for example, and put uh, content way off the page and the, the person on the screen didn't see it, but the browser saw it, and so it was another way uh, at the time for black hats to move in and uh, defeat the algorithm utilizing the cascading style sheets. And so what, what Google at that time was actually asking and wanting was us to you know, unblock that in our cascading style sheets. Okay. All right, any other comments on this one? Yeah, don't block. <laughs> now, the, the next article was, a, by the way, if you're following along at home, all of these uh, uh, items can be seen on the SEO News community on Google+. Plus. Um, this um, was uh, a post uh, shared uh, originally by the inimitable uh, AJ Cohn, and... Um, um, I, I saw it and uh, wondered if, um, and, and uh, Rob Mars uh, tried to get me to use it. I, I really did try, Rob, but I could not uh, um, fire it up. It, it kept telling me my, my device uh, um, was too old. Angela tells me the same thing. Um, anyway, uh, um, this is on uh, Google Inbox. Um, um, I suppose, um, well, uh, Rob Mars, tell us all about it. You've been using it. Well, I have installed it. That doesn't mean I'm using it. <laughs> it it's something you, you need to trust a bit too much uh, since it, it, it organizes your emails that come in and it, it puts the, it in, in, in maps and, uh, yeah. I think you will have to get used to it, uh, and I'm not yet. Perhaps Peter is. I'm a little. <laughs> it, it just yeah, I, I see it not as a new product, but just a new interface for Gmail. It uh, when you use it, it synchronizes everything with Gmail, or it is it is just Gmail, but with another interface and just some smart features. And so it's all the same, basically, right? Yeah, it is Gmail. Yeah. And when you go with your desktop to Gmail, then you get a notification about uh, you installed Inbox. Do you want to use Inbox? So it's just Gmail. But you can set notifications and, <coughs> and label things faster and smarter. So I think it's I like prepping. It. I think it's prepping for the smartwatch. I mean, we've got. Uh, Nexus watch is coming out. I'm actually programming right now in uh, an app for it uh, with the, the new tools that Google has given us back in 2000 at the I/O conference in 2014. So beginning of the year, they came out with some spectacular tools for 
uh, being able to to be able to move the blocks and, and the and screens and then the interactivities and the animations between uh, screens. And I think that that's going to be more of their direction. Inbox is just part of that uh, addition, and I think it's preparation for the holidays and the launch. I mean, we've already got the Moto 360 out there. Um, I was going to go ahead and get that one, but I don't like the round. Uh, I like more of the square. If you look at Google's uh, interface, it's all, it's all blocky. So the Nexus 5 is going to be one of those, I think, better designs for... I mean, I've got the Nexus 5, so I love that device, and the updates comes very quick. So I think the inbox is going to, to be that additional um, added bonus for users that use the smartwatch or even the Google Glasses. Okay. Anybody else on this? All right, um, let's move on to our next item, which is um, um, an article by Pete Myers uh, on Moz uh, um, talking about um, the Penguin update um, and um, asking uh, how big um, was um, Penguin 3. The general consensus, of course, is that it was just a, a small uh, update. That's correct. He's 100% on that one. I think the general consensus is that it was just a small refresh, that there was no update at all. No big deal. Hmm. I'm seeing some sites that were like on page 15 come back to like page 5. Oh, I've seen sites that were on page 30, 40 coming back to page 1 and 2. Yeah, so... But they're sites that got hit years ago. We don't, know, I, I, we don't know if it's over yet or what's going on, so again, we can just take this question and maybe bring it up next week. Hopefully that by then the dust has settled. I think the dust has already settled. I don't think there's any more movement. I think it is what it is. This is what you see now is what you're getting. From what I understand about that update, though, guys, is it's going to be rolling every month. So the goal of that, and, and that's even been stated by John, well, halfway stated by John Mueller, but um, you know, other people have commented on the same suggestions. Cause if you look at the, the panda roll, and it was only temporary for a while. We, were, we had to wait for it to roll. And uh, I think artificial intelligence and machine learning and the knowledge vault, all those elements together has helped them to identify uh, some of these sites. And again, going back to Google Webmaster Forums, when I field questions there, I've seen the actual sites that were targeted, they needed to be targeted. So uh, the algorithm, I, I feel, has done a fantastic job on filtration. Now, has, has it missed a few things? Yes. And I think that's where they're going to continue to all... Um, look at dis additional signals of what they found out of this and then move into the next transition of what they missed. So I think that you know, it's going to be a continuation and that's why I always push, you know, you have to clean up your mess. You can't just disavow it. If you can't try to get rid of it, you know, I know people, you know, I know that I couldn't get a hold of Link's webmasters. I couldn't get a, I couldn't get links removed. So of course those have to go on your disavow. But at least you have ones that are in your disavow file that have been removed, um, that you got in contact, or you have notations in your disavow. But just you know, hoping that you're not going to get hit is going to be one of those things that you are probably going to get hit. It's just a matter of time if you have those problems. I call it the killer penguin. It's a killer panda. Uh, it's a killer panda now, and it's a killer penguin for so many companies. And it's it's devastating when people get hit. It's unfortunate, but uh, it, it goes back to how closely are you monitoring or working with your marketing team, and you know, how often are you looking at your analytics? If you you know you're working with a marketing company, they might actually just give you those analytics at the end of the month, 
and that's the first time they've looked at it too. So they were. How often uh, are you doing SEO audits? Do you do that once a month, or do you do that every couple of days, like me? Yeah, I mean, you have to always look. If, when we see, we are always looking at, and we always see ahead of the game because we are looking ahead of the game. Where's Google headed? You know, with maybe smart technology. Uh, so mobile is ver their big thing right now, and we can see that as a very big push. And we can they've already you know bragged about it many times. But how do we how do we protect our companies for the future if we're not paying attention? Like you said, site audits. Well, how do you do a site audit? There's there's simple you ways. Shouldn't, you shouldn't. No, but I tell you what, I have to disagree. I think you shouldn't have to be looking at this type of junk. Yeah, in 95% of the cases, maybe you've done it yourself and you deserve it. But there's going to be some cases where you don't deserve it. And you shouldn't have to be checking for this. You know, I know, I know, and, and I don't care what anyone says. Everyone says, "Oh, show me examples." If I put my oh, mind I, to I, it, I, really I, could, honestly, I like, I have to disagree respectfully. I have to disagree respectfully, and and I disagree because billion-dollar businesses. You know, I'm dealing with like very small little things. Even though I do it every every two days, you know, I, I find negative SEO constantly for you know a three hundred fifty dollar keyword. So I disagree respectfully. Yeah, but we're not talking about how many billion dollar companies are there in the world versus how many how many, you know, one hundred thousand dollar companies are there in the world. You know, you're sort of you're taking one one end of the spectrum and that's that's a different that's a different I'm case. Talking Fortune one thousands and Fortune five hundreds and, and small and medium businesses that don't want to pay for that, you know, hundred and fifty dollar or ninety dollar keyword. No, I think we're we're at cross purpose. I don't think we're talking about the same thing here. What I'm saying is, I don't think the company should have to be checking to see what their link, what links are coming into them and disavowing them on a weekly or a monthly or any basis. Yeah, so that's the, the point I'm making. Yeah, the question is, what are you doing yeah, practice I agree with what ought to happen? So there, there's two different things. I think Richard's saying what sh what should be happening, what ought to happen, whereas I think Baruch is talking about what needs to be done practically speaking given the situation at this moment. Yeah, no, I, I, that's probably the case. That's probably quite correct. But but like I say, I'm coming from the point of view that I know based on what the sites, the, the most recent sites that have been hit, what they've been hit for, that I know I, I could have I caused some of that damage. If I put my mind to it with the knowledge I have and et cetera, and most of the people here in the panel, if we put our mind to it, we could probably ding some of those sites. And that's the problem. I'm not saying that it's happening on a on a large scale because most people probably don't want to get into that that sort of that sort of uh, that sort of work. But I'm quite sure it's 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 absolutely feasible to do. And the longer this sort of algorithm sticks around, uh, the more we're going to see of it. For sure, we're going to see sites that are getting hit that shouldn't be hit. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, look look after the. Uh the the second <laughs> the second year that penguin started running I mean look at the rise of all the negative SEO um, companies out there just they just ballooned a, a whole new industry overnight uh, within that year um, <laughs> you look the thing is we 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 you know I understand from Google's point of view in terms of you know if you're building crap and you're trying to game the system, uh, I, I totally, I totally get it. But on the other hand, if Bing can sort out spam and if uh, if Bing can um, devalue a technically unnatural spam link, then then then, then Google can. But the point is, is are they pissed off enough now? Of having to do it, and the, all the gaming that they're just thinking, right now we penalise. But the law of unintended consequences has given rise to a whole other industry which they never thought of. No, I don't think they're able to detect it on a link by link basis. Not quick enough. I think they're only able to detect it on an aggregate basis. That's what Penguin is about: is, is an aggregate link profile. Um, but. I still think that they're opening the door for people to do very bad things to small websites, small companies, new websites, even for some big companies. Um, and okay, I'm sure they're doing as much as they can to mitigate it, but really, I think the the problem is probably the strategy. It's it's not not the tactics that they're employing. So um, yeah, I don't know what they're going to come up with. 
Um, I think the fact that they've probably done, just done a refresh now means that they still have problems. I don't know whether that's problems with the algorithm or with integrating it or whatever it might be they're going to come up with, but they're having problems with this. There's no doubt. The only reason they did a refresh is because I think they were just embarrassed that it was taking them so long to get something out there. I hate to interrupt you, but I, I want to disagree with that. I, I think that what we're doing is we're missing the point of what they're doing with Penguin uh, on a ongoing process. I think it's going to be automated, and they're utilizing different signals. Now, I don't think, you know, looking in the future again with a crystal ball, we can't obviously know what Google is going to do. But if you look at the patterns that they've created from the history of back in the day when we first started link building, and then we had the big uh, algorithm back in, what, 2001, uh, Florida update that basically took out half the Internet, and that was their first attempt of trying to actually mitigate link building. And then throughout the years, they've been working on an automated way of dissecting links. They came up with page rank and all that stuff. That was gamed. And then we looked even further to where else it was gamed. Uh, and then we look into ne uh, negative SEO. Yes, negative SEO has been around for a long time, and it's worked on many different foundries. I mean, if you're wanting to rank for a $100 uh, a click keyword, you're going to probably end up hiring a team of negative SEOs, probably. I wouldn't do it. But, you know, that that's what some of these guys, that's their mentality. That's what they did. And so how do you stop that mentality, I think, is what, what Google's looking to get towards, is there's a better way of uh, showing who's an authoritative uh, profile. So links are only one portion of the game. The rest of the game is customer, visitor engagement, experience on the website, speed of a website. There's all criteria that have to go into that. But Panda and Penguin, I believe, are a combination effort even with uh, Pigeon. And so, you know, what's going to be the next algorithm update name that are going to come out that we can all talk about? I mean, could it be Polar Bear? I mean, I, I, talk, I tease about that one. But I'm serious, too, because it's like, okay, so what happens if all of a sudden the link signal goes away? Then negative SEO kind of goes away as well. You know, then you don't have to worry about those those reports. But um, you know, back to the original conversation with Brooke, he, he checks every week. I I make sure at least for my link profiles, I will check them every month and I'll look to see what's new. Most of the time, I'm not going to see anything because I'm not link building. But if I was to get a whole mass amount of links, maybe those are due to efforts of maybe news media or other things that have kind of circulated my site but nothing that I had built. Now, if all of a sudden I get a spill of uh, 1,000 links or even 100 links at a time, which a lot of these negative SEO companies will do 50 or 100 at a time, so that in your profile, when you're looking every month, you don't really pay attention to just random links that are coming in. But if you're trained to it and you look at it every month, you can identify signals that may look a little wonky and go, okay, what's happening to me, especially if I'm in a very competitive market? But right now... It seems to actually have an effect, but I believe in the future, then we're not going to see this problem. And I think that Google is working to fix their problem, and I believe the only way they can fix it is to remove a, not not be a link-based algorithm. I don't think I don't think there's any way they can remove this. But the big difference between all these, I I, I hear what you're saying that they they you know over the years they've been fighting this. The big difference came with Penguin. Previously, what they were trying to do was they were trying to just uh, basically come up with ways to ignore these links, suddenly Penguin introduced penalties. What I think they should have done was they should have identified these sites and just reset their link profile, but not penalize them for 12 months or for multiple years. I think that would have been enough to make people start again and probably try and do things the right way. Well, I but think the there's, now, mis there's, there's misinformation about it being a year. Everybody is talking about this year and two-year uh, you know, recovery. But it is a year. Sure, it was 12 months between refreshes. Absolutely not. I had I, I had clients that came to me last year, and within three months I was helping them fix their profile, and they got back. They were penalized with Panda and Penguin. Pa no, pa I'm talking about Penguin. I'm not talking about Panda at all. I'm okay. only talking about Penguin. But fairness. still, they came to me with both those, and then started coming back in the actual ranking. So they actually had yeah, significant. At the moment, Dave, William, we're to just talking about Penguin. Uh, well, yeah, this, this, this is this is about yeah, yeah. The, the Penguin update and. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't mean to, to get to all my mind, defensive on that, but I think it's just completely, yeah.
that nobody's defensive. But I, I don't um, think that I should have to spend any of my time. I'm I'm blaming, I shouldn't be spending any of my time worried about other people linking to me. Yeah. No, I hear you. Like I shouldn't. I don't think I should. I think my time would be better spent, you know, like you said, making better experiences for users, making websites better, coming up with good strategies to, to market websites better. I don't think, and Baruch maybe say, oh, I do it every week. Yeah. I don't think there should be a role to do that. I don't think that should be a requirement of, of marketing or SEO, really. I don't think that, we, I think we should, it, we should be looking at positive stuff, not negative. I agree, 100%. I agree 100 percent. And that's the point I'm making. I'm not I'm not arguing, I'm not saying about Baruch that he shouldn't be doing it. I think practically, yeah, he's probably doing a great job for his clients, but I don't think we should be doing this at all. Google yeah. has created this scenario. I think that that's the mistake they made. Because it wasn't here. I, we didn't none of us were talking about this three years ago. Like we really weren't. That's exactly right. It was it's Google's uh, um, implementation of Apple Apple Limit 3. Um, that's co that's caused it. Um, yeah, so um, it's really. A, I mean, Bing seems to be able to um, um, rank uh, uh, sites properly without, um, um, you know, w with, without having to pay. The Bing doesn't give penalties. Uh, I don't think Yandex gives penalties either, do they? And that you know, the, 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 they provide good res results. I mean, so, so what, why does Google have to use upper limit thresholds? Um, it just doesn't make um, doesn't make sense to me. They could fix this negative SEO thing um, just with one decision. You know, um, they can just decide that they they're going to act ethically in the future. I've I've been I've been talking about. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jim. I mean. You're talking about you know something that all of us have been kind of pitching for a long time, you know, and it goes. It takes me. I always go back to the 2001 only for the fact of just going into what happened and why uh, those things happen and why these algorithms even are in place. But I've always been teaching about backlinks since I've started in the industry because I, I watched I watched companies fall back in the day. And I, I saw this being a technique that's going to end up getting filtered someday. I just didn't know when. Yeah, well, I I have to say that I I I um I'm I'm pretty much a, a what Richard said person. Um, um, it um it really is ridiculous that we're in this situation. Um, um in my case, uh, um, with with a couple of my clients, I already charged a couple of clients considerable sums of money to. Reorganize their um, um, disavow lists, um, but I refunded it, and and, and the reason I, I refunded it was because I heard from Brian, uh, or not from Brian White, but through others, that Brian White had said uh, said at SMX in Sydney um, when he was asked what does Google do with the disavow list, uh, he said we don't do anything with it. He said. Um, we look at it um, if, if, if there's a, a review uh, for a manual penalty, but other than that, we don't touch it. This was about, what was that, uh, 15 or 18 months after um, um, the Penguin was released? Sorry, um, the, sorry the disavow tool was released? Mm -hmm. I remember that, that conversation and the articles that were written around that as well. Uh, it made a lot of waves. Um, because I'd say the truth was probably somewhere in the middle. As with many of these things, they're never black or white. Yeah. Well, the other thing that uh, I've been finding fascinating is there's a couple articles out there uh, that have been pre-Panda or sorry, pre-Penguin 3.0 uh, from this last update. Uh, that some people that actually used, they, they cleaned up their links and they did everything right, but they still use the disavow tool, have, re have shown signs of recovery from doing that. I used to be completely avid to all my clients. I don't use the disavow tool. Even when uh, those clients came from the other marketing companies, I still haven't used the disavow tool. Um, and that's, that's the weird part for me is there's still that, 
uh, untested or unanswered question by Google, okay, is this un uh, disavow tool going to be effective or can that hurt me by putting all my links in this, even though you already have them? You know, my, you know, the fear I think everybody had was, okay, I have my set of lists, but I have uh, less, I have more in my link profile than you show in Webmaster Tools, so if I actually add all these links, are you going to then penalize me for that too? Because it doesn't show in Webmaster Tools. Um, that I think was um, written by a ton of different marketers across the web uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks, I think. Um, but Madam William Mastataki Wasa has pointed out that it is black and white after all. Um, I mean, penguins and penguins uh, are black and white after all. Yeah. I remember asking John Mueller. This is years ago. I remember asking him uh, for an algorithmic penalty. Was there any difference between removing the links and adding adding the domains or the URLs to your disavow file? And he said no. So, like, I always sort of took that. I always said to myself, well, how could they possibly know whether you removed them or not, or whether they were disavowed? Is there a difference? And he said there was no difference. Mm. But anyhow. Guys, I actually have to jump off, I'm afraid, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for, for making the time available to us tonight, mate. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's been good fun, and uh, I'm just, it's just a pity I can't do it more often, but hopefully I'll be around next week with a bit of luck, and if I am, I'll join again. Yeah. Okay, guys, thanks a million. Hope, good talking to you all. No problem. Hopefully our software will work a little bit better next week. No, it's all good. Yeah, you definitely. could do with getting a new presenter, though, yeah? Pardon? You could do with a new presenter, I'd say. Thanks. Thanks very yeah. much. <laughs> Great job. Great job. Thanks, Thanks. That's not fair. I, I can't be an SEO. You, 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 they don't sack me, guys. <laughs> All right, um, let, let's um, move on from Penguin, unless anybody else wants to add, add, add something more to this discussion. So uh, to summarize, uh, we, we all think that Google should um, smarten up its act, yeah? OK, um, and uh, we're at the end. Um, I must. Get some, I must do something to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, all right, um, guys, uh, we've we've done it again. Uh, any news that uh, or anything else you want to want to talk about before we go to green room? Okay. Well, to, to those of you still watching um, w with us, uh, we thank you very much for that. Uh, 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 your your uh, participation in, in uh, this uh, makes what we do worthwhile, and that's why we come back every week uh, to do it again. Um, and we'll be back at the same time next week. Um, in the um, SDA questions community on Google Plus, I'll put a link uh, to come into this hangout. It won't be on the air, um, but um, we'd love to have you uh, uh, come and join us for a chat. Um, we have a lot of fun uh, after after our clips and um, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, thank you very much.